Welcome everyone to another episode of the Definitive Crusade. I celebrate the Dolphins and join the Machine Hughes here with another show. Joining me from across the pond, as always, are my two crusading uh, colleagues. We have Random Dude Josh. How's it going, Josh? It's going. How are you, Johnny? I'm very well, thank you. And of course, Freya, the anti-football goddess herself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. I, I, she's not saying no. I must be right. You know. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I'm not a huge fan of football. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Football. We, but, uh, we know you've been very vocal about that. We know. Oh, I could be more vocal if you want me to. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. Yeah, well, you know, we'll say we'll save the vocals for the uh, the book you picked. Mm. <laughs> well, God. You know, I've been really good this year. I expected a nice Christmas present, but no, you picked this. Can't believe that. <laughs> right, before we get to Freya's <laughs> Freya's controversial pick again, um <laughs> let's go, let's let's go as mainstream as you can get when it comes to DC comics. Let's talk about the book that came out a couple of weeks ago. Um Batman Catwoman number one. There you go. It's a book long been waited. I think it was due out back in January time this year. Obviously, the pandemic's had an impact on publishing, and then, of course, there was the announced delays for whatever reasons. Um, so if you haven't had enough of Tom King on Batman, he's back for a further 12 issues. There you go. Written by Tom King, art by the fantastic Clayman. Colours by Tomé Moray, and letters by Clayton's Yes, I do other books and X-Men, Carl's. There you go. Um, I've got to say, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit jaded with this book because I thought it was great. But let's let's throw it out. Josh, we'll go with you first. What do you think of Batman Catwoman? So I thought it was just gonna be another story of Batman and Catwoman's relationship and blah, blah, blah. But no. In fact, we get a surprise from that was originally introduced in 93. And I'm not going to lie. I very, very much appreciated how they worked in probably one of my favorite villains, the Phantasm. <gasps> From the cartoon show, from the cartoon movie, uh, right? The movie, exactly. Yeah. So if you if you see the particular panel, you you look at the reflection on that clock, and that's Phantasm. That was the first thing I noticed. You know, so we we get this story. Andrea Beaumont is is back in Gotham, and looking for her son. I don't want to spoil the rest of the story, but to be honest, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. You know, this, thought, book's been, this book's been out two, three weeks by the time the pod goes, so, you know, I think people who are buying the book mm -hmm. will have known the story, so feel free. Well, but at the same time, there was, like, a twist at the end that I wasn't even anticipating. Okay. And and that's the twist that if you haven't read the book, I highly recommend you read the book. Um, I thought the artwork was spot on. Colors were vibrant. And honestly, I, I have no issues with this book. I really, really enjoyed it. Do you think there's enough of a story? Because, I mean, the book looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, it, it's more of a... I guess it's more of a, a sample piece of what we expect from Batten and Cat, and of course, the art by Claire Mann. Is there enough of a story to get you in by an issue two? I think there is. Okay. Cool. Just be, because of the fact that, one, how are they going to bring, you know, Andrea Beaumont back into this? How is mm -hmm. the Phantasm going to be involved? Okay, cool. All right. So that's that's where my interest is. Like, I, I don't even feel that, you know, I, as you can see on, on the one panel here, yeah, Joker's in it. But I don't feel that this is a Batman-Joker story. Not yet. 
Not yet. It, it'll come later, let's be honest. But um, at least for this particular issue, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Cool. Good Charles. Um, Freya, we 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 all pretty much kicked the crap out of Heroes in Crisis, which was for the majority of the part, um, a Tom King Clay Man production. Mm -hmm. Although I think we all agreed that the art was gorgeous. Um are you ready for another another bout of, of kingism? Um I mean uh <sighs> yes and no. Um I'm always for, you know, writers and stuff trying to redeem themselves after, you know, we, we trashed it. But because <laughs> I, I like seeing <laughs> I like seeing people succeed. Um I do agree with Josh on a couple things. Ooh, yes. Go on, we have to set go on, I'm not saying a lot. I'm saying a couple. I, so, I will take it. Yeah. I will well, take mm -hmm. it. So anyway, um I was happy to see Andrea. Um because I also like that uh movie. Um however with how the story is set up, the transitions, um it kind of threw me off. Like, I didn't know what the hell was going on sometimes. Because, mm. you know, it, they're sitting there having tea. And then, you know, Bruce and her are banging. And Alfred walks in. I'm like, Alfred, you should know the freaking knock. You never just walk into someone's room. Especially Bruce Wayne's. But, like, <laughs> um, it, the, the jump from, um, you know, Bruce Wayne getting it on. And then all of a sudden, we're at, and, like, retirement home in Florida. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And plus we started off with her, you know, driving and then the transitions threw me off. Um, and then we go to Batman and Catwoman who honestly, I don't even know why she's involved since Batman's just looking for um, Andrea's son. Who's a 12 year old and what 12 year old runs to freaking Gotham. I, I understand he, he ran because he's looking for his father and I am going to spoil things because I'm not as nice as Josh. So if you don't want to hear some spoilers, then just don't freaking listen to me. Because you yeah. know, yeah, pause this, go check for the NFL scores, come back. Yeah, in about read, five. go read the book or something. But yeah, <laughs> and um, I mean, it, it jumps around. They're like, oh, this is Selena, and she's old. I'm like, okay, and then it jumps over back to the past, and she's with Bruce finding this kid, which I don't even know why. Why would she be interested? Why would she even do it? Catwoman is, I mean. <laughs> trying to make her into just a hero which her character is not if anything she's an anti-hero and so uh, her doing this just out of the goodness of her heart doesn't really freaking make sense for the character um mm -hmm. and so that's what threw me off and plus it's also helping someone that batman has banged in the past or recently i should say <laughs> like, like, i mean and um, also with the artwork, the colors were very good, but but I found some issues, unlike Josh apparently. Um, so they have that little, you know, a gargoyle standing thing, and Bruce has that. I like his suit, and you know, Catwoman's suit is very reminiscent of the past, on like page nine, I want to say, where they're on the gargoyle, and they have yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you see, she has like the black boots, and then her costume's kind of gray, and then it has the white, so. She kind of looks like a cat, and then she has the goggles on top, and Bruce has the little holster right there and whatnot. But if you go to the next page, it, it, it all magically disappears when they're making out, unless it's another freaking transition, which with this book, I guess it could be because they like to jump around and not tell you they're <laughs> jumping around. And so, I don't know. Could you tell me, is this just another flashback that he's having mid-jump? Like, because no, all of a sudden she's in no, a completely... No, that's... No, no, that's uh, I'm with Josh. I think this is... That's kind of current. So, do you see them on the gargoyle? And she's got, like, the, the cat the cat belly going on there. And then mm -hmm. when you see them kissing, you've got to... From my point of view, you've got to look where the, the uh, light source is. So, the light source looks to be the moon behind Batman's right shoulder. So therefore, everything in from that side of Catwoman would be dark because there's no light on it. And of course, but, if you're getting a side profile, it means you're not getting to see the the to me the, the stomach sort of like tabby belly that you that you saw in the previous one. But, 
So well, the point is, is that her shoes would still be apparent. His um, little side leg holster would still be there. Her goggles would still be there, and they're not. Um. And no, her, her belt's not holster, even there. The holster's on the right hand side, and just uh, no, no, you're right. No, no, because that leg could be the leg. No, because the, the no, because if you look at his leg, he has a leg behind Selena. So unless he's super flexible and can twist his legs around, that, that would leg, be his it's right leg. It's leg plastic. Man. Man. It has to be. <laughs> it's plastic. Leg man. That's bent. That man's leg that's bent could be his left leg, and therefore you wouldn't get a holster. And because the, the holster's leg in front. on because the, then the holster's on the leg that's hidden by Catwoman. Alternatively, if that is his right leg, then the holster strap is hidden by Catwoman's bum. Nah, because it goes all the way down to his knee, pretty much. It's Go pretty far down. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, mm. <laughs> I, I didn't I, expect I, I, this episode I, to come in and start staring at Batman's leg. <laughs> no, when you've got Catwoman in fishnets, it shouldn't be, no. Oh, but, that, but that's fishnets. Go, go to the next page and you'll see that I'm right. See this little, uh, the fifth this one? one? This one They're right standing. here. Bam. Yeah, yeah, her shoes are still gone. It's holster's like gone. If you go in one of the previous ones, her goggles are still gone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to admit it, phrase right. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't argue with me when it comes to inconsistencies <laughs> with costumes. <laughs> Okay, cool. And then, yeah. then <laughs> I actually uh, later when they're fighting in the sewers, I love her um, her outfit. It reminds me of the animated series outfit because mm -hmm. now it's just full on gray and then black, and you know, and I just I really like that outfit. I there's no awkward armpit hole to let her breathe. Um, By the so way, gonna... because of your holster obsession, look the holster's back. I know. I was going to say it's that too. Back. Holster's back. <laughs> and to, to correct some of the goggles, she's wearing a goggle. She goggles in the previous plan. She could be putting them across her eyes. That's why they're not yep. on top of her forehead. But I'm not. I'm just saying. Yeah, they were square previously too. Now they're a cat, like the angular. But <laughs> I didn't want to bring that up too, <laughs> or else this entire <laughs> thing would just be me nitpicking everything. Um, I did like the design for Joker, um, especially you can really see it on page 18 or 19 where he's just standing there. He has the gun holsters and stuff. He kind of reminds me of like a 1950s like gangster, which I think mm -hmm. I have. A, I, I really like that style. Um, also, Selena's looking nice. Um, I just, I don't know. This whole thing was kind of weird um, at the end. Um because it turns out, once again, spoilers, that the old man she's talking to is actually old Joker. And she's like, now I can finally kill you. I'm like, how many decades has it been? And no, now you can kill Joker? It, no, that's not her that's saying it. I thought that was him. No, that was... Well, um, no phrase on this. Oh, she's, she, doing, she's doing it. Look, it looks like um, Selena's going to, going to kill the Joker. Okay. Yeah. But this brings up a nice interesting point because you talked about fan, uh, Phantasm and Andrea Beaumont. Uh, you've got Catwoman, you've got Batman. You've got to think at some point that sounds like a bit of a love triangle. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think there's another love triangle in play. I think I think there's hints hints that uh, that Joker and Catwoman had a thing at some point. If you read the dialogue, but you know, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm not quite sure. Or even is Andrew Beaumont's kid the Joker's? Yeah, I thought uh, that was what they were hinting oh. at. But I have a question, and maybe it's just because I don't I'm pretty iffy with some lore. Um, when she's talking, she's was Helena um, always was she a bi or a lesbian? Because I thought she had a thing for Dick Grayson. Helena, who? Which one? Catwoman's daughter. Well, that's yeah. Helena. That's Helena Wayne. Mm -hmm. The one that's the one that potentially is is by is that not Helena Bertinelli, which is a different huntress altogether. Which yeah, would, yeah because Catwoman makes a comment right here, you know, because now now that Freya's spoiled it, 
Um, Joker asks, you know, how's Helena? And she says she's dating a very nice woman, a doctor. No, maybe we all had dinner. Well, maybe I've got it wrong then. So maybe, maybe it's of course, obviously it's retro. I do know that Helena Bertinelli and Dick Grayson definitely had a thing mm -hmm. because there was a mini series about it, and mm -hmm. they've done it since um, New Fifty Two as well. So that's kind of a that the Helena Bertinelli and Dick Grayson is definitely a thing. Um, going back to Helena Wayne and my Earth Two, I'm not sure if they actually got together at the time because you got to remember Dick Grayson was the ward of Bruce Wayne and therefore no they did because remember when we had that thing where we were talking about the creepiest relationships in dc comics i don't know if it was me but someone brought up the helena wayne and dick grayson one because he makes some really uh disturbing <laughs> comments about seeing her naked well, well. they, they kind of had a weird incestuous thing going <laughs> not even like real like they had a weird thing going on um we'll just keep it at that it was yeah I, I was just confused because i didn't remember her being by at least not this huntress mm -hmm. so that's why i asked i'm like i don't remember her being by but no there you go that's why i was asking it's alluded, it's alluded is it not alluded to as well in the is it not alluded to in the next book we're going to talk to talk about i think as well i'm i don't know Let's see. Um, all right. Okay. So um, to get a little back a bit on track, I kind of. Um, you're right. By the way, Helen Wayne and Dick Grayson did have a romantic thing. Well done. Congratulations. Um, so Thank yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No points for Jeopardy on that one. Um, I like this book. I thought the book was great. Um, I do think there's not a lot of story to it. Um, you read the first time I read it, I thought, "Wow, this is fantastic." Second time I read it, I was kind of like, eh, yeah, it's still pretty good. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. For me, I think given Tom King a set amount of issues, should hopefully, look, fingers crossed, should hopefully iron out some of his pacing issues. But that said, Heroes in Crisis was two issues too long already. So um, the art by Clear Man's gorgeous um, all the way through. Mark more Catwoman and fishnets please for me that would be great thank you um other than that i'm interested to see where it goes i was, I was it was a it was well worth the wait definitely mm -hmm. yeah, cool all right um we're on to our second book and it's freya's choice <laughs> so you're gonna suffer later for this one by the way so, Just then, uh, no. so, so <laughs> I am pleased to say, is that is it pleased the right word? I'm not quite sure that the book we are going to look at next is DC's Very Merry Multiverse. Da -da, 10 holiday stories from across the multiverse that shoot to put a, a Christmas present in your stocking, or is it a lump of coal? Well. <sighs> There's loads of loads of creators in this, so I'm just going to go through a, a, a quick few of them. You've got Paul Shea, Nick Giovanni, Steve Lieber, John Lehman. You've got Danny, um, Adita Bindica is in letters. You've got uh, Tamara Bonvillain as a colorist. Vanessa Del Rey is there as artists. Um, David F. Walker puts in a story. Derek Freidolfs and Dustin Newgun on Nagoyan. Uh, go back to the Batman Beyond Roots for that with Dustin Nagoyne's art. Um, Travis Lennon puts in some work. There is a Tom King story in there f featuring Lobo. So basically, you've got a whole range of different things. Freya, why, for the love of God, did you pick this book? Because it's the holidays. <laughs> and this is why people do stupid things on the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but should you really be bad at me or should you be bad at DC for even putting this crap out? <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, I don't mind. See, DC uh -huh. can put the book out as a, as a holiday book. I, uh -huh. I normally have a choice. 
Because if this was my local comic book shop, I would just blow past this like I blow past all the other holiday specials that come out. But no, <laughs> somebody I know thinks that it's wise for them to pick <laughs> this book, so therefore I have to spend 20 minutes <sighs> thumbing through the damn thing. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Go on then, Freya. Tell us which one you liked, if any. <laughs> yeah, tell you what, you better have liked some of these. If you're just going to pick a book just to keep um, all 10 stories, so, then there's got to be one you liked. Okay, so I did, story-wise, mm, not really. I didn't like any of them, but art-wise. <laughs> um, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Actually, I thought it was just cute. Okay, here's the thing. I chose this for a number of reasons. One, because it has a number, it has different creators on it. And I was hoping that at least one of them would be a good story. Um, I did like the artwork in... Um, also, another reason I picked it is because they are going... There is a story that had Earth-11 in it. And Earth-11 is going to be kind of a big deal coming up, in case you guys forgot. You know, they're going to have... Um, a series with them so um also wanted to check that out and see how exactly they're going to be doing that and um because you guys you know remember try everything once and this is a um quick little sneak peek at what's to come for that so um you, you, know, that, you know that we've had other christmases right yeah this I know. just like try one christmas you know yeah. just just saying right, okay. yeah. so what's so special about earth 11 Earth 11 is essentially gender swap um, Earth. Wow. Everyone switched around. Um, Aquaman is Aquaman and blah, blah, blah. And so Damien is Talia. And apparently people don't know how to freaking, you know, do a Google search of creative names because now Talia, you know, old regular Talia is now Ali. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, way to be creative on that name. But... <laughs> um, Honestly, the artwork for that story was very well done. I liked the colors. I liked everything about it. Um, I liked the character design choice, except for, I'm assuming, I don't even know who that is, and I really should. Um, the magic character? Who the crap is that? Zatara. Is that Zatara? It's also Clarina the witch girl, as opposed to Clarion the witch boy. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Zatara. And then Zatara. Okay. It says Zatara. So, I am going to be kind of mean. That looks like one of those uh, um, Monster High Bratz dolls. Which one? The slutty one or the transvestite one? Um, the one that's the witch in the black dress. <laughs> it looks like the... Um, well, it looks like the uh, the Frankenstein oh. one with the green skin. Yeah, Zatara. Yeah. So that looks like, you know, Monster High doll reject. But also I had a problem with what they did with uh, one has Wonder Boy. I don't even freaking know. And our Magnificent Man. Because they look like just cheap knockoff, you know, uh, freaking Vegas, you know, magicians. <laughs> like, really? That's the design you go for with those characters? All right. You know, it's just... Ugh. Now, whilst you're talking about this, I will say this story was probably my least favourite in all of them. Well, to be fair, there's lots of the least favourites. Um, I did quite like the the script on this one because there's lots of lots of in-jokes to DC stuff. So, for example, when they were talking about Wonder Boy or whatever his name is, one of them says, I think the Talia Robin turns around and says, man, his past is so confused, even my mum can't work it out which is a nod to the Donna Troy Wonder Girl mm -hmm. uh, backstory because that has been so retro changed so many times, you know? So I did like there was kind of like, and that and that's kind of a bit of a theme throughout this whole book if you take the time to read it, not yeah. like speed through it like I did. There are, there are little touches here and there that kind of hint back at a broader comedic element within the, um, the inconsistencies of the DC universe. So I, I kind of, I, I kind of want to applaud that from that point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's like I said, um, I mostly picked because of that, and considering that's going to be a, a new um, book that they're going to be doing. So it's, I just wanted to see everyone's reaction to the gender swapped characters because uh, Earth Eleven, I guess, existed before. Um, 
But yeah, they're making it more main, like in their face. Also, it had a lot of. Uh, we had Bizarro World, which I know Tracy liked, and um. Oh, <laughs> Bizarro World. <laughs> Bizarro World, um, and then other things. So it, it was just nice, and not all of the art was bad. Like I like the Bizarro Love Holiday. I like the artwork in that. Um, it was very cartoony, but I didn't really have any main issues with it because you know at least everything everyone had faces. But you know, were brought in the front and stuff like that. Story wise, eh, because these are all just like knockoffs of like It's a Wonderful Life and The Grinch and stuff. So, yeah. eh, eh, story wise, it's nothing all that great. But if you're just going for fun, yeah, it's pretty freaking stupid and ridiculous. I'll I'm, some of it. <laughs> I've got, I, I mean, I, I, applaud, I applaud the efforts. I applaud the, I guess, the idea of, of Earth 11 and the gender swap element. Um, despite my comment earlier about, um, the monster brats dolls that's more about the, the dolls themselves rather than any specific gender or um gender identity or gender fluidity i'll get that out there um but my question is this hmm. if i don't like flash as a character if i don't like if i don't like the idea of the the fastest man alive am i really going to be that bothered that it's a woman that's the fastest person alive the fastest woman alive is it really going to make that much of a difference if the key character element is the thing you don't like what what what's it matter and on top of that having a female flash is no different to when jesse quick was around mm -hmm. so I, I, maybe i'm look, maybe i'm looking at it with with old man eyes or whatever and i've got no problem with gender swap characters at all i think how not to mention Marvel, but I think how Marvel have done the, the new Daredevil for Daredevil 25, I think that was brilliant. Well done. I liked how they did Lady Thor. That was well done. You know? But, you know, those are two characters that have kind of adopted the guys rather than being just like, oh, look, instead of being called, I don't know, Barry Allen, I'm now called Barbara Allen. But I'm still a police forensic scientist and I still do all the things that the Barry, the Barry does. I'm just got a different name and a pair of boots. It, I, I don't. It, if you're reading the book, if you're reading the superhero book, because the the characters are dudes, then I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't get it. If you if you're buying it because it's the Flash, well then mm -hmm. fair enough. You're not going to buy the Flash regardless whether it's a a guy or a girl. And if you don't like the Flash, you're not going to buy it regardless if it's a guy or a girl. Or is it just me looking into this? Am I wrong? No, because here's the, I I'm fine with gender swap if done properly. Because my problem usually is, is if they gender swap it, then all of a sudden the character's personality changes, uh -huh. and that's what gets on my nerves. It's not so much that oh now they're female or now they're male. That doesn't bother me. It's more the fact that almost all every time they change their personalities, and mm -hmm. it, it's it's kind of irritating. And I mean, they even kind of did that here. Because at the end, where, where is it? Um, they save the Justice League, and then there's a little thing um, where Super or one uh, Superwoman is talking to Supergirl, and uh, the, the, Talia, the, the Damien female version, is standing right there, and Su Wonder or Superwoman is telling, you know, uh, Supergirl, well, your dad and I want you to he want you to spend time with other heroes other than Talia. And I'm like, see, I don't think, I don't remember Clark ever saying something like that. Especially, mm. not, especially not next to Damien. Like, they were, from what I remember, they were trying to get their sons to, you know, interact with each other. But this one, mm. she's actively telling Supergirl, oh, don't hang out with her. <laughs> you know? yeah, crazy. That's where I have problems, is because it's almost guaranteed that they're going to change their personalities. And that's that's the whole thing. It's it's not their job or anything. It's their core personalities that always seem to end up being changed. And that's why I have a problem with it. But if they still act the same, like if that uh, if Superman is Superwoman and they still act like each other, exactly, you know, they have the same personality, then I don't care. But people cannot help themselves <laughs> but to change the personalities to how you know even even just with different writers they do that too yeah. though but and that's why yeah. a lot of people have 
issues with different writers. They're still men, but people are still upset with how they, let's just take Batgirl right now, for example. People are pissed off with how they're making Batgirl act at this point in time. And I'm pissed because it doesn't seem like Batgirl. <laughs> you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And so it, gender doesn't mean anything really. It's, it's how these characters are written and their personalities that they're actually changing. That's when people get angry. So then my question, and this is just a rhetoric question, because mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Josh, because I've got a question for him. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> if, if gender doesn't matter, what's the point of Earth 11? Just as a rhetoric question for something to think about. All right. Josh, mm -hmm. Batman Beyond, old school, check it out. Don't you miss the Batman Beyond old school world instead of the one we got now? The story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with it? This is this is Batman Beyond when it used to be the online comic <laughs> first of all, wasn't it? You know, if yes. I if I wanted to read a story that was gonna bore me to death, I might as well just read a Christmas Carol because that's what this freaking story was. Do you not like do you not like the homage? I appreciated it. And I appreciated the fact that at first it started out in Gotham of the Future, but then uh, I, I don't know. It, it was wonky as hell to me. And yeah, it was cool to see the gray ghost make an appearance. That that was cool. I appreciated that. Um, I did find it weird that Alfred's using a cane with young Bruce. Like, really? He needs a cane? Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I don't know. Th this one had weird transitions. It it took mm -hmm. me a hot minute to realize. Oh wait, it's modeled after a Christmas Carol, and then it's all because he, you know, suffered too much radiation from fighting blight. What? What? That makes <laughs> no. That no, makes no, zero no. sense. It's the comic books. <sighs> we're going to apply, no we're going to apply logic to our to ourselves. How come Batman always manages to swing on a rope? How's he managed to get attached? Uh, yeah, yeah. God. But then I just, I just realized because I was also confused with the last panel where Bruce is, you know, talking about the relic from his past of, of the cane. And it's like, wait, what the hell? And I just now realized that that's the same cane that Alfred was using in the, the vision that Terry was having. Da, da, da. I, I don't know. I just so it, it's not <laughs> I, I, honestly. I have been very disappointed <laughs> with that and beyond books lately. <gasps> Dude, that's your fetish you're turning down. You I know, and down. that's why I'm ugh. all right. Okay, fine. To be fair, mm. though, if we're gonna be using logic. They did do a study that even if you've seen something once, your brain kind of remembers it back in the recesses. So he might have seen Alfred in a picture with the cane, and so he was probably just dreaming. Because they also say that you remember seeing every, fa every face you see on the street, even though you consciously don't. And that's why uh, people in your dreams are people you've actually seen on the street. Okay. Okay. So if you want to bring logic into a comic book... <laughs> Well, okay, so if you want to do that, then why in the <laughs> hell did they feel the need for the Teen Justice team to be controlled by the damn starfish again? Why did they feel the need to have two bizarro stories? That's the thing. Because Honestly, beating a dead horse is very much what DC does. <laughs> I, I, if, if that was the case, we would have had at least three Harley stories. Um, honestly, I'm kind of disappointed we didn't get punchline in this. Yeah, actually, I kind of am too. Um, the I'm, I'm kind of about to read this. The, yeah. If if Trey's logic tracks, and that you remember stuff, they have to sub, if you remember something subconsciously instead of trying to avoid it, no matter how hard you try. That means this book is taking up valuable space in my head. Thanks, Freya. Cheers You're for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the Christmas by Gaslight, get Gaslight, Gaslight story. <sighs> I tried to give it a chance, but the artwork was just so yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. Rough. I can't. Uh, it's styled. I think uh, we'll be we'll be nice. We'll use we'll use our Christmas words. It was stylized. Yes. Um, I was probably when I flicked through the menu of the of the book, I was like, whoa, 
love to see some more gaslight. And then I looked at it, I was like, man, that, that's really annoyed me. Um, yeah. They kind of took it a little too far because it looks like something you would read in the newspaper back in like the 1940s. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, Johnny, I was the same way as you, where I was like, oh, sweet gaslight. I, I'd love to see more. Mm -hmm. And then it was a total disappointment, although it was cool to see Mr. Freeze. Mm. I, I, like I, think, I think they've got some really good ideas on how to do the characters in a gaslight scenario. I uh, just wish the, if they were going to do it, it doesn't Tighten want to, up the artwork. Yeah, so, guys, really did, you, did you not enjoy the hippie version of everyone? <laughs> But right. like Afro well, Superman and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm not gonna lie. After reading this book, that really kind of fueled what will be happening later in the episode. Oh, thanks, Freya. My <laughs> God. Right. On that note, we're gonna take a break. I'm gonna see if I can pour bleach into my brain just to get rid of this book. Um, <laughs> you know. I don't know. I might, I might even have to go. I might have to go rogue and read a Marvel book to get rid of this. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go, go with Indy. Not like that would help Indy, you, Johnny. <laughs> Indy will make you feel better. Not the one I read this morning. It didn't. All right. Okay. On that note, check out Comic Crusaders for the new and come up uh, review of Grim Fairy Tales Forty Three. So you'll see what I'm Ooh. talking about. All right. Okay. We'll take a break now, and when we come back. You know what? Because it's that time of year, we'll have some jeopardy. In the adverts. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Are you wanting to read a new comic book that has nothing to do with the big two? Are you tired of looking through countless titles and have no idea where to begin? Well, don't you worry because the random dude Josh and Johnny the Machine Hughes has the podcast for you. Flipside Focus, only on the Undercover Capes Podcast Network. Boom. There you go. Check out Flipside Forecast for all your indie needs. Um, and you know what? I know I might have just dissed Grim Fairy Tales. That's just one, one book. There's loads of different books out there for loads of different tastes. So I enjoy Flipside. Go and take a walk on the flip side. We, we may have to do a, a manga episode and bring Freya on. Yeah, yeah that'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Let's do that. We can all, we can all uh, dress up as k <coughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I used to cosplay, so no. <laughs> oh, 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 who's your characters? Who did you cosplay as? Um, I did, let's see. See, I did Cheryl from Archer one time. I did Harley <laughs> Quinn one time. I yeah, that yeah, well, 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 well. You did you, you cosplayed as Harley. You hate Harley. Next yeah. time you went as Red Hood. No, I did Harley because honestly, I just felt like it. <laughs> and then of course I did some anime characters too, but I don't do that anymore. So <laughs> I still have the stuff though. <laughs> Oh, there's a podcast for later. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, Josh, this is your segment. Um, as Freya, I think, kicked your ass last time on uh, Jeopardy. Rules normally flow, <laughs> but loser gets to run the show. So I hand over my, uh, my Jeopardy hosting. All right, well, I hope you guys are excited for Jeopardy because here we go. <laughs> That's right. We just we just did that. And check this out. I even have an actual board for this. Hey. 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 And look, I even have your names. Check this out. So the categories for today's episode <laughs> of TDC Jeopardy. We have the Phantasm of the Opera. This is Perfect. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I'm so excited for these. You have no idea. 
<laughs> I could sense the cringing. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just getting my little scoreboard uh, ready. Why? I've got a scoreboard right here. Well, yeah, no, but you, uh, yeah, I've seen how you count. So, well, right. you know. <laughs> All right. So, um, actually, where's my coin? Where is my coin? Hold on. I have a coin. We're going to flip for who goes first. Where is that blasted coin? God, I feel like Two Face right now. Can't find my coin and I'm losing it. There we go. I found it. So, we're going to use this wonderful Raichu coin. Freya will be Raichu. Johnny will get the dark side. Woohoo! Oh, hell. Let's try that again, shall we? Heads or tails, <laughs> kitty cat. Oh, Johnny, you get to go first. Do we not get to choose who goes first? No. Nope. That, that seems like a pretty sucky thing to win. Johnny, just... Let's go. just Johnny just taking medicine is what you're saying. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we'll go with the Phantasm of the Opera for 100, please. All right. <laughs> She's an angel, all right. An angel of death. Who is Andrea Beaumont? Well done. Booyah. All Ooh. right. See, and it even puts the proper score. So you got 100 on that. <clears throat> now, this one, I didn't do any first appearances and stuff like that. So we're not going to worry about that for this. All right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Johnny, you control the board. Can I go for? Phantasm of the Opera for 200, please. All right. It wouldn't be a Batman story without this two-timer. Hmm. Who is Joker? Spot on. Now, do you know the quote that I'm referencing? Um, is it when he's talking to his um robot maid in the world's fair? Nope, nope. He's uh, when the old man shows up and Joker <laughs> says, What is an old timer like you doing with a two timer like me? All right, Johnny, you control the board. We'll go for 300, please. Okay, he thought the bat whacked Chucky Souls and Buzz Bronski, but oh, was he wrong. Ooh, Chucky Souls. It's not it's not Falcone, is it? Who is Falcone? No, not... Freya? I don't know. Who is uh Arthur Reeves? Nope. Who is Salvatore or Salvatore? No. Oh, damn it. All ah. right. I'll I'll I'll, I'll say this out. Can we go for Phantasm for four, please? Four hundred. Absolutely. All right. What's worse, getting infected by Joker toxin or having your hair ripped off? Um, is this a person? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Who is Arthur Reeves? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Batman number 399 Batman rips off Arthur Reeves toupee and puts it on the table oh cool so 393 there's a one to put, keep an eye open for alright we'll go with Phantasm for 500 please <clears throat> she was sure asking a lot of questions from the grave who is Andrea Beaumont's mum what's her name I don't know mum <laughs> if, Sorry, now, I was to say now, if you read, calm, calm. if you actually read all of Batman Catwoman, her name is in there. Valerie, who is Valerie? Eh. Freya, <clears throat> it's who is Victoria? Victoria Beaumont. <laughs> all right. So, Phantasm of the Opera is completed. Freya, you control the board. Um. All right, let's try. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas for 100. Just know right. what the heck that is. 
1993 gave us a surprise Christmas present in theaters. Oh. Um, what is Batman and Robin? Nope. Eh. Batman. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> what is Batman Mask of the Phantasm? Absolutely. Um. All right, Johnny, you control the board. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. The 200. And I guarantee that's the last time I'll sing. Get your fanny packs ready because this Christmas you won't have to go to the cinema to enjoy it. Thanks, 2020. Um, <clears throat> what's a fanny pack? Because I'm British. Fanny pack is the little like purse that you wrap around your waist. Yeah, I knew I, I knew that was. I knew why it was. I was just winding up. <laughs> it's, um, what is Wonder Woman eighty four? Yep. Kind of see where I'm going with with this <laughs> category. Is it about Christmas? Yeah, stuff that happens in December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like All the, right, Johnny, like you control the board. Like the dolphins crashing and burning. All right, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Just say it. Check the stats. I'm right. All right. Christmas for 300, please. Do you think they bought the wrapping paper for their big present at Shrek's? What is... It's, it's, it's not the movie. What is Batman Returns? Uh, close, but not what I'm looking for. Freya. So are you looking for like a movie name or like a, something that happens in the movie? Well, Johnny alluded to it. So it does take place within Batman Returns. Are, are, we, are we talking about Bat? Um, uh, crap. Let's take a guess already. <laughs> I'm just going to say like the, the, the Bat Nipples and Bat Thong. I don't freaking know what exactly... Nope. <laughs> Who is the Red Triangle Gang? Ah, right. The boom. big present boom. that Shrex goes, it's not mine, and boom, out they come. All right. <clears throat> Johnny, you can pull the board. Uh, Christmas for 400, please. Warner Brothers was so ecstatic to bring in $22 million from the box office on Christmas Day, they were completely stoked with joy. What's this got to do with Batman? What's this got to do with DC? I... Um... Let me see the answer. What no. is... What is... What is Waterworld? Eh. Freya? I'm just going to say, what is Aquaman? Because of the water comic. Yep. <laughs> yeah. well, so well. on Christmas Day, when Aquaman was playing in theaters, it Did brought it in 22. So it came out December 19th. Oh, okay. But on Christmas Day, it made $22 million <laughs> at the box office in the States. Mm -hmm. So, all right, Freya, you control the board. All right, let's finish off. Uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. All right. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. And here's a $50 million bounty on the bat. Love, Roman Sionis. There is no way this is worth 500 points. No way whatsoever. Um... Crap, why can't I remember? I'm just going to say Batman Returns. I don't freaking know. Eh. Yeah. What is Batman Origins? Man, Johnny, if you didn't get this, I would have been pissed. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two categories down. Johnny is at 1,500 points. Freya is trailing at 900, but this is still anyone's game. Uh, Johnny, you can the <clears throat> This is perfect for 500, please. For five? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Oh, wow, there's a typo. We're 100% sure that we won't see Halle Berry reprise her role as this graphic designer again. And you cannot say Catwoman. It has to be the alter ego. Is it not who is <laughs> Selena Kyle? No, it is not Selena Kyle. Yeah. Um, geez, what was her name? <sighs> crap if you're five. making us like actually want like you expect us to actually read or watch this stupid movie well to be fair if it was a choice um, of watching catwoman movies Faye, you'd probably pick the bad one like this <laughs> you know what screw you johnny her name's i think like patience phillips or something like that yep who is patience phillips screw you johnny <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry because this is the on, on the line. Is it the on the line? I'm sure I can hear your fingers hitting the keyboard, keyboards. I'm, I'm sure I can hear that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's uh, this is perfect for 100. All right. You'll really flip when you hear her roar. Oh, is this like. <sighs> Crap, what was her name? Tight Patience Red Phillips. <laughs> Patience <laughs> Phillips. <laughs> I think I don't know. Uh Tiger Claw. Oh, crap. What was her name? No, I'll just do Tiger Claw. I can't remember the name. Eh, Johnny. Yeah, kind of figured as much. Um, God, then this is the 100 question. Crap. Drop my food. Is it? <laughs> is it? Bearing in mind where you've gone with this previously, is it who is Michelle Pfeiffer? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And oh. Catwoman, hear me roar, and then she flips away. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think it's a good thing Freya doesn't have her screen on because I think she'd be flipping you something right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Man. All right. <laughs> be fair, Johnny... I can't remember freaking actors or actresses' names ever, pretty much. <laughs> All right. I will go with um, – hold on. What's the scores? Am I on – So, uh, Johnny, you're three. at 1,600. Frey is at 14. Six times 200 between it. Uh, I'll just – I'll go perfect for two. <laughs> for two. Perfect for two. You may think Batman has her heart, but Catwoman's heart really belonged to someone else. <clears throat> Who is Sam Bradley? Eh. Freya. Um, oh, you can. What is her sister's name? Um. Oh, of course, that's a good shout. Crap! I don't remember her sister's name. Um. Is who is freaking Ali? Kyle, crap, what's her name? If it's, if it's the sister, it's Maggie. Ma yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, whoever her sister is. Um, I'll just go with what you said, Johnny. I'll say Maggie, even I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not. Yeah, it's... Eh. Mm. Who's Tommy Elliot, a.k.a. Hush, when he oh, surgically Hush. removed yeah, her yeah. heart? Yeah, um, comics. <laughs> you're being, like, literal. <laughs> yep. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm two, I'm two ahead. I'm two ahead. If I get either one of these, I've won. So I'm going with perfect oh. for 300. By the way, there is a final Jeopardy. Just throwing that out, out there. Oh. Wow. So, it, so yeah. 300. I'm a Barry. <laughs> so you said 300, correct? Yeah, that is. That's 300. All right, it's no surprise that Batman was swooned from Catania, Irania, Titania, Kerenska, Alisov. But that's quite the name. Oof. Who is Miss Kitka? Yes. Nice. Did you know that Kitka is actually the acronym for Catania, Irania, Titania, Kerenska, Alisov? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I knew that. I had to say that like four or five times practicing because I didn't want to jack it up. <laughs> yeah, for Lee Merriweather, 
Catwoman as opposed to um, the Junior New Mal one. Yep. Thank God it wasn't an Right. Perfect for right. 400, please. All right. If you, th oh, another typo. If you thought Commissioner Gordon was mad about Barbara being a sidekick, how puss, um, how puss, how pissed <laughs> would, <laughs> would the Falcones be if they found out who this sidekick really is? So it's Cat Girl is the person. I don't know a secret identity, so I'll go with who is Cat Girl. Okay, I'll be nice. Yes, it is. Who is Katrina Falcone, a.k.a. Cat Girl? Cat Girl. All right. So, going into Final Jeopardy, we've got Johnny at 2300 with Freya at 1400. So, this Final Jeopardy. This is, this is going, to take, going to take around and say that the Final Jeopardy question is going to be worth six plus three, so seven, 10,000, aren't you? You're going to say it's, it's yeah, yeah, 1,000 a a thousand points or something. Yeah. No, mm. 2020 points. So, 2020. Mm. All right, okay, fine. <laughs> All right, so get your Twitters open there, kids. <clears throat> All right, so for the final Jeopardy question, this father really should have paid his bills. This father should have really paid his bills. <clears throat> you gotta admit, I did a good job on these questions this time. Um, yeah. I'll tell you how good the questions are if I get the question right, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm going to okay. probably spell it wrong, so. Whatever. <clears throat> All right. So, answers are in. So, Johnny said, who is John Grayson? Freya said, who is Rex Calabrese? Both of those are wrong. Yes. Never have been pleased to be so wrong. Yes. <laughs> Who is Carl Beaumont? Oh, I should have figured as much. Because of the Mask of the Phantasm in, that was brought up in the book, and with it being December and Mask of the Phantasm being a theme, I was like, <laughs> yep, Carl Beaumont it is, so. That being said, Johnny, you won with 2,300 points. Woo! Yay! So, congratulations. You survived my Jeopardy. <laughs> That's fine. That's good. <laughs> good show. Well done. I like the uh, I like the board. That was pretty cool. You have to send that over for the next time we do this. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's the end of uh, the show. What I will say... <clears throat> is this is the show that's going out before Christmas, all right? So wherever you are in the world, whatever you do, whatever your religious slant is, <coughs> enjoy the holidays. Do the best you can to enjoy the time with whomever you can and make sure you do it safely, all right? I hate for anybody to, to not be here next year when we've got more books to talk about, okay? Um, between Christmas and New Year, we are still going to be here. The Definitive Crusade is going to place the best... Christmas movie ever that's Batman Returns in case anybody was wondering against the other live action Batman movies I'm not sure if we're including Justice League or Batman vs Superman but we're probably including mm. Batman vs Superman at least um, so we're going to put a bit of a, a, a list together what we like what we don't like um, and we're going to, that's going to be our topic so we've been threatening it for ages I'm going to finally have to explain why I think uh, Batman and Robin is better than the Dark Knight Rises. I'm so oh, was that actually a conversation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a conversation. All right, okay. <laughs> so all that's left for me to say is, um, Josh, thanks very much. Have a great time over the Christmas break. You as well. Freya, I hope Santa Claus is good to you. Usually is. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I like your choice of books. Thank you very much. <laughs> and <laughs> passive aggressive much. And <laughs> don't forget to check out the UCPN for all your favorite shows because they're still going to be there over Christmas when you're <laughs> sick of turkeys and your batteries have run out on all your toys and you haven't got that book that you wanted. We'll still be here <laughs> talking DC Comics on the Definitive Crusade, Marvel Books on the No Price Podcast, and Flipside Focus covering off everything indie. And hey, if you didn't like the mainstream music you got, you don't know, check out K-pop. Cosmo for anything that's um, a little bit K-pop and try something new for a change. Mm. All right, there you go. So, guys, all the best, and uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Adios. <laughs>